Hello, hola. <laughs> Hello, everyone. San Diego, Tijuana, our design region, our lovely design region, but also anywhere else you're tuning in for this virtual event. Uh, thank you for taking the time for this, what I call power hour, because there's so much we would love to uncover for you in such a short amount of time. But we're excited that you're, you've come to tune in and join in on, on our Friday, depends on what day you are, where you're at um, in this afternoon, uh, kind of between your days. So thank you for being here. All right, um, let's see. This webinar will best serve working professionals, design enthusiasts, and sustainability, sustainability practitioners who want to learn and explore how design can be powerful in amplifying corporate sustainable action. It's a mouthful. Um, but let's talk about this as crossroads between design and sustainability, um, where that sweet spot lies, um, and explore the powerful relationship between con conscious design and corporate sustainability, striving to build a better world for generations to come. Mighty feat, but let's, let's see how that is quite possible. But first, um, I do want to say from our team is that we are super delighted to be part of this San Diego Design Week 2020, um, especially in this design plus sustainability category. Um, we send off a big thank you to Stacy and the great people behind the events. Their support and appreciation for our design community is, has been nothing but love. And they are just such great supportive people and such great um, energy. It's pretty infectious. Um, most of the programs are free, so be sure to check out the diverse content at sandiegodesignweek.org. Um, sddesignweek.org, technically. Um, and I do want to announce, uh, we are um, happy to announce that there's a poster giveaway uh, and, uh, um, that we'll be randomly selecting a attendee during our live session, um, and they will be receiving a, an official San Diego Design poster, very beautifully designed poster. Um, and of course, we have a little hint that possibly the best question uh, may win. So definitely enter your questions. There's a little feature in Zoom that says Q&A. Enter your questions as, at any time and, and at one point we'll collect them all and we'll sort through and try to answer a couple of those. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So to start us off, um, so I am Edison, the design director at Think Parallax. Um, I started with the company um, about 13 years ago when we were in the garage. I was an intern then. Um, I'm your host to just guide you through today. Um, and what's interesting is uh, I wanted to start us off to, with some kind of you know deep question, and instead I chose a random question just to like keep it keep it light. And uh, the question that came for us, uh, for me and my our panelists today was, "What's your favorite color?" And I was like, you know what? That's perfect. <laughs> We're designers. We're creative people. Why not answer that? Um, I'll start to my favorite color. I would actually choose black because black is bold. Um, it could be active, it could be passive, um, and black can also be calming. And it's such a great color to pair up with other colors and is, is so great to um, just design with just by solo, right? Um, put in the comments what your favorite colors are and but also express why. Um, and to set us all up for introductions, I've got some super talented colleagues with me. I'm so excited for you guys to meet them. Um, I'll say, go ahead and introduce yourselves and share your color. All right, hi everyone. My name is Kirsten Nyhill. I'm an art director at Think Parallax and I love working for this company for so many different reasons, but one of the most important is that we are women owned and we're also a B Corp, which is a fabulous type of company to work for. And I wanna share my favorite color. This is for all you designers out there. Um, <laughs> this is from my Pantone <laughs> Daily Mood chart. And this color is ocean wave green. And of course the ocean always makes me happy and it's my happy place. So uh, at least by having the chip here, you all can see the color too. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Ita? While he figures that out, let's, let's uh, yeah, Izzy, go first, yeah. 
Uh, hi, I'm Izzy Ashley. I am not a designer. I'm the marketing coordinator at Think Parallax. Been here just over a year and honored to be alongside these super talented designers that I get to work with on a daily basis. It's truly a pleasure. And my favorite color is actually cerulean blue. Um, my choice for less complex of a reason, it's because I remember the Crayola crayon box as a kid. It was always such a surprise as a kid. You don't know what that means. And then you draw on a piece of paper as this vibrant, beautiful color that looks like the ocean. So yeah, that's, that's my choice. I love that. Oh, I also love that people are entering their colors. Purple, oh, can I tell you, it, purple is such a hard color to get clients to approve. <laughs> and, we, and we love to challenge and try to change things up. But for some reason, purple is like not the one that gets approved. But, you know, I love purple. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I do want to also um, state that our strategist, Nathan, is not with us. He is out spending well-deserved time with family. He was originally part of the group uh, for the presentation. So we apologize if you were expecting Nathan, um, but that's why we have Izzy. Thank you, Izzy, for stepping in. Um, he's out uh, with family, taking some really good time off. We are super supportive and happy for that, that it all worked out, especially during this time in COVID. He's probably out enjoying nature in Colorado with his family and we love it. So but he's here with us in spirit, but also in content. So a lot of this writing and con um, um, content that you'll see was with collaboration with them. Okay, so what do we have for you guys in this power hour? Um, well, we'll share examples of how visual storytelling creates human connection and amplifies social and environmental impact. We will help define the value of design with examples found in many industries in the beginning. Then we hope to inspire you with what we do at Think Parallax and hope and how we amplify our clients' sustainability efforts. And we hope to empower you with a simple vision board exercise we created um, so that you can discover how your creativity can turn into action and contribute to the sustainability movement. So, in our first section, I think it, we should start off with what is sustainability, right? Because it's such a wide term and Nathan came up with something really great. So I'm just gonna read this out. Um, the way to think about it is that it stems from the Latin word sustainer, meaning to support, sustain, preserve. Sustain sustainability means enduring long into the future um, it refers to the ecosystems and processes that, are, it, that we are able to operate and persist um, on their own over long periods of time. It's this ide ideolo ideology, um, proactive and approach to problem solving that is ever important in a world where the human population is increasing at a rapid rate and using the Earth's resources at unimaginable rates. Very well said. That's Nathan. <laughs> Design shapes every facet of the human experience from the buildings that we live in, the products that we use, and the, the graphics we take in. The term sustainable development, which encapsulates ecological sustainability, economic opportunity, and social inclusion has quickly risen in popularity and importance as we look into the future. We want to do uh, the best that we can uh, throughout the days. And I think what was really cool is we're gonna segment into the idea of what Ewan has done about this. Um, and they've created um, 17 different topics um, that they call SDGs. And I'm gonna bring it to Izzy to explain a little bit what that is. Yeah, thanks so much Edison for that great overview of what sustainability is and shout out to Nathan for helping out with that. Um, but yeah, we are going to talk a lot about the SDGs and design in this power hour. And before we do that, I just wanted to give like a little refresher about what those are, or if you're entirely unfamiliar with them to introduce them to you for the first time. So these 17 goals that you see on the screen are the sustainable development goals, also known as the SDGs. And there are these 17 cause topics that the UN created as a part of the 2030 agenda 
to act as a blueprint for us to achieve a better and more sustainable future for our world. And they're really important. And a lot of companies and organizations use them um, to align themselves with for this unified vision for a better world that we are aiming towards. And um, yeah, so if you, if you look at the 17 goals on the screen, just take a few seconds to soak them in. And if you want to in the chat, go ahead and say um, which one resonates the most with you uh, based, on, based on what you can see. And if you can't see them, you can do a quick Google search for what they are and, and they'll, they'll show you. But I can go ahead and share that for me, um, kind of depends based on what project I'm working on or, or what's happening in the world it definitely changes which SDG resonates with me the most. But right now I would say it would be SDG 10, which is um, reduced inequalities. But yeah, keep, keep sharing in the chat. I know it's hard to choose one. I definitely hear you, Danielle. Um, but if we want to keep moving along, Edison, I'd love to jump into some yes. design examples that, that represent these really well. So um, now that we have that foundation set up and top of mind, I wanted to share a few examples across different industries that demonstrate how different organization can use sustainable elements of design to amplify not only their sustainability message, but also how these can ladder up to the SDGs. And so this first example on the left is known supply and i don't know if anyone especially san diego people it tends to be a pretty popular brand around here but it's a little smaller um and right now the apparel industry in general um, is embracing sustainability and transparency and better ethics more um, when it comes to manufacturing and sourcing which is really awesome but known supply definitely stands out uh, from a design standpoint. And to give a little overview about what their mission is, um, they, they aim to humanize this nameless and faceless industry and everything about their brand is human centric. You can even see by their marketing materials that are on the screen, just tons of photos of people and the people who make their clothes. And they really drive this message home about um, this human centric design and this human centric approach by introducing you to who made your clothing by literally attaching a tag to every product that they sell that's signed by the person who made that that product and they even have an online portal where you can research the person's name who's on the tag which i think is just really cool um and a really just strides towards transparency for the retail and apparel industry I love that. And I, I remember seeing that you can actually see what their favorite things are. There's like full on profiles and yeah, people full profiles. It's calling really out cool. thank yous to them. Like yeah. what a connection, right? A direct connect. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Definitely. Um, on, a, on the totally other front though, right? There's method, which I'm sure more people are familiar with. It's this major disruptor in the world of cleaning products. And for me, this brand just stands out uh, with their thoughtful design and um, specifically laddering up to SDG 12. I have a few uh, on the side over there, but SDG 12, which is responsible consumption and production, it's a clear priority in everything that they do from how the bottles are shaped to how they tell the story, even the chemical formulas in the cleaning solutions, you can see it all on their website. And then specifically, you can, you can see it here, it's the little blue image there of the recyclable refill pouches for their hand soap bottles, which are typically single use. And it was just this really clever idea and ingenious way to use sustainability and design to create something that's longer lasting. Very yeah. nice. Very cool. I remember when they first came out, I was like, ah, oh, that's so awesome. They're thinking about not just the product itself, but like the container and the process. Yeah. And yeah, it's great. Great example. I do want to say that we have Ita back. I believe his, his volume is working. Ita, cool. are you there? Cool. Yes. Yay, Ita. So let's have your proper introduction. Everyone, this is Ita. Okay, hi, my name's Ita. I'm a graphic designer here at Think Parallax, and I've been with the company about two years. Uh, my favorite, favorite color, color yeah. is blue, and that's because that's a uh, windmill's favorite color is blue. 
such a bad joke. <laughs> awesome. wow. We yeah, love it. You. We needed that that little break. <laughs> thank you. All right, Izzy, what else you got here? Yeah, diving right back in. To some <laughs> stuff. Dive in. Um, but yeah, so the other examples here, I mean, the consumer goods industry that we kind of just went over, they can do a lot to showcase sustainability through design. And I wanted to showcase these NGO, international organization, nonprofit examples, because it's just uh, showing how provocative um, and thought-provoking this design can be for the things that they're campaigning for. So on the left side, you see World Wildlife Fund, which their campaigns are very popular. I mean, their striking visuals just stand out. I'm sure maybe perhaps people have come across this campaign before. But if you pay attention to the top image there, I mean, all at once, it's telling this haunting story about deforestation, how we need trees for healthy air and to breathe and the threat that it poses to our future, um, just all in this graphic, which is just really beautiful. And then if you look on the right, uh, this is one of my favorite campaigns I think I've ever come across, sustainability or otherwise. It's by, uh, it's a collaboration from Plastic Oceans Foundation, Lad Bible, and this British creative agency called AMVBBDO. And it successfully brings attention to climate change and pollution through this very design heavy campaign called the Trash Isles, which if you're unfamiliar, the Trash Isles essentially was a campaign to make the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is this floating gyre of plastic in the Pacific Ocean, an official country recognized by the United Nations. Very bold, very provocative, like captures your attention immediately, but a part of that project and a part of the materials they shared were um, these, what you see here on the screen, the flag, the official currency, which is called debris, the passport, the stamps, and I don't know if you can see it super closely, but just the detail and the sophistication that's shown through this design and just kind of the emotional response it brings from you while also, it's also slightly satirical. I mean, it's just, it's brilliant. Um, and yeah, as you can I see, love that. ladder up to the SDG 14 and 15 about life on land and life below water. It's a beautiful design. And just the amount of detail and, and creative thought put into it and really making a point. It's such a different way to look at it. And it's so poignant. Thank yeah, I think their first official citizen was Al Gore. And then <laughs> recently, their next official citizen or honorary citizen is uh, David, At David Attenborough, which is oh, amazing. That's great. Can yeah. we join in? <laughs> I know. I was like, how do I apply? <laughs> Pledge to be citizens and help, you know, rectify this problem. Yeah. That's amazing. Exactly. So cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. You've got more, some, more goodies for us. Let's yeah, we got the final two, which are about something really important, and that's gained a lot of attention lately, which is diversity and inclusion. And so Procter & Gamble, uh, they just have incredible video campaigns around diversity, which can't really speak to in terms of design, but except this one example. But I really encourage everyone who's interested or just uh, is curious what they're doing to look up those campaigns, because they're very emotional and do a great job um, painting the picture of what's going on in people's lives. But back to this, we see equal campaign. Um, yeah, it's this is all about inclusive design. And so um, we at Think Parallax, sustainability is a term that kind of goes beyond environmentalism. Um, it definitely encompasses you know, DNI and more like the social side, the governance side of uh, sustainability or corporate impact. And this campaign uh, embodies that really well, showcasing SDG 10, the one I brought up earlier about um, equality and just showing the industry innovation through the small change made to the shampoo and conditioner bottles by adding these raised indentations to um, aid the visually impaired. And it was a really simple change. It was spearheaded by um, a woman at their company who does have a visual impairment. And yeah, just, just an everyday object being brought um, attention to this company that's in charge of many of the products we have in our homes on a daily basis. And um, just how powerful that can be when they choose to pay attention. Absolutely. Then, yeah. Yeah. I, I would add that just watching the videos, it's just 
you can't imagine that why hasn't anyone thought of this simple solution before from the beginning you know Absolutely. and when yeah. she speaks to how much that changed her life it was like oh my gosh why have we not included that in, yeah in the product development but it's it's great Absolutely. Thoughtful and inclu inclusive design. Um, yeah. yeah. And then the very last one um, is called, it's a campaign called True Colors. It isn't associated with a specific brand. Instead, it actually highlights um, what some people could call the, the shortcomings of really big corporations. And by just simply changing the opacity of these brands' logos, um, showing how much or the actually lack thereof of diversity on these leadership teams at these companies. And um, this got a lot of attention. Uh, this is, this came out, I think this past April and you can go on their Instagram page and look uh, through the companies that they've shown on there and who's doing really well in terms of diversity and who's struggling. And as companies step up and want to embrace better messages and better policies around diversity and inclusion, this is just a way of, through design powerfully showing a moment of accountability for these brands as they move forward and trying to improve. Yes, absolutely. I love how simple it is. And it's just like, wow, it just makes such a visual impact immediately, even without really getting even more context. It's, an, it's almost enough and you understand it. Yeah. Uh, I would wanna add too that, you know, it, this topic is such a relevant topic and we're all dealing with it. And, and I think the strides is to recognize where you're at and being honest, but also even better is to find the strength to know how to improve that, right? And to, to own that you want to make better strides for, for inclusivity. So yeah. but these are great examples. Thank totally. you. Yeah, yeah. All right, thank you for sharing that. That was some juicy stuff so i'm going to keep saying juicy yeah, no, <laughs> no worries. so good okay so to kind of summarize what what is this crosshair of design and sustainability um this is another way to think about it uh design amplifies sustainability promoting values and aspirations for change in a variety of topics uh, encouraging people to care and support progress toward a sustainable world um, the visual here just kind of emulates, you know, you can turn up the volume and, and you could start somewhere. We like to start with stories, for example, um, and we believe that stories turn into messages, which can then for, uh, therefore influence recording and, there, and then move, uh, movement. Um, stories can also reach people, influence change, etc. So the impact and the verb you know, can vibrate through. And I think that's a way to kind of think of what design can do for sustainability. Okay, we're gonna move on to the Inspire section. Um, I am gonna first start off. We talked about what is sustainability, but now what is corporate sustainability specifically? Um, I think the way to kind of think about it, um, it describes all initiatives and business practices related to how a company is addressing and managing its environmental and social impact, but also how it's governed, how it runs, right? Um, why is corporate sustainability so important? Because it's good business. I mean, that's just where we're at, which is actually good news. In reduction in costs through energy savings from using renewable alternatives and more efficient technology, companies are being rated for improving their consumption and minimizing their waste, and that's good news. Um, and as far as sales, it increases sales um, because of your buying power. It's, it's real. You know, more, more consumers are wanting these products and companies are absolutely listening. So that's good for you to know. Uh, minimize risk for in, in inventors, uh, investors, sorry, um, and increase recruitment and retention rates. Um, what that means is that employees want to work for responsible companies with those shared values. Um, and of course, at the end, it does increase brand reputation. Very much true. Um, this sets the tone of the client work we're about to share because they are, um, these clients, our clients that we partnered with, um, they are very much aware that um, they are an important influencer 
um, corporations have the potential to lead sustainable change. And, but, okay, so who, who and what is Think Parallax? <laughs> We're not always visible. We're usually busy and a bit more behind the scenes. Um, so in a way, this is kind of our first time kind of sharing what we do to a lot of everyone. Um, so let's explain it. Well, we are a team of values-driven strategists, designers, and storytellers. We give meaning and voice to brands' sustainability initiatives through strategic storytelling. We harness the support of stakeholders to drive systemic change and long-term success. While it is equally important to have a corporate sustainability strategy, which is also what we do, we have a really sharp strategist team um, on our end, um, it is also important to bring it to life and communicate real purpose to get buy-in and support for big impact. Um, and now I would love to have Kirsten take us through some of our case studies. Excellent. Thank you, Edison. So we're hoping we'll be able to inspire you guys today with a handful of examples of our work. Um, so this first one you see on the screen here is some work we've done with Southwest Airlines. So Southwest as a company understands that it's really their people that make the difference in their company. So when we began working on their annual sustainability report, which is called the One Report, we had a few goals in mind. And so first we needed to improve just the general design of the report. So it was online, we needed to make sure that the usability was great, it had a good user experience, content was more accessible, you know, all the typical stuff that you do when you're working with a report online. But then strategically, we needed to think about how are we going to represent Southwest Airlines to the best way we could. And so what we did was we utilized stories and testimonials from real people to share the positive impact that Southwest was making on the world, because they do so much. Um, if we move to the next slide, you can see a cross section of the types of stories that were told from Southwest. And they came from the employees, they came from customers, and even from the community members that Southwest worked in. And they all reinforced this one thought. We take pride in our reputation as the airline with heart. And you know, they use the heart icon in a lot of their design pieces. And everything they do is really represented by this idea of heart. So from a design perspective, you can see all of these photos represent, are represented by people or include people in them. So it was very important from a visual perspective that we put that first. And then just to cover off on some of the things you're seeing here on screen, like at the bottom, it's the CEO talking about leading a company with heart. Up near the top is um, some of Southwest diversity inclusion efforts where they were promoting women pilots. And down in the bottom right, how they developed this uh, curriculum called Fearlessly Authentic, and that focused on diversity and inclusion for the LGBTQI plus community. And then also their community outreach and volunteering efforts. Employees at Southwest actually volunteered more than 200,000 hours, and in the company itself invested more than $450,000 in community organizations. So you can see that they not only talk about the good they do, but they actually really are out there doing good. And so it was really important to make sure that we were representing that throughout all of their work and that the people were the best way to do that. Awesome. I, I do want to add too that uh, working with the people at Southwest uh, was so impressive to me because they really do care from the top down. Um, you know, from the CEO to the frontliners, it was really impressive that they really put their heart on their sleeves per se, which is literally what they end up doing with that, that heart symbol. Um, and it's this shared value of people care that helps them sustain and for their customers to easily identify with. Um, so it's really encouraging to read their uh, stories. So definitely check them out. Yeah. Thanks. And let's move on to the next one. All right. Interface is another client we work with. And if you guys aren't familiar with them, they are a really cool company that makes these modular tile carpets that have these beautiful and unique patterns. And if you look at the image on the left side, that flooring there is actually some of the carpet. It's made to look like the ocean. They have some that looks like grass. I mean, the patterns are magnificent. So 
from designer's perspective and industrial designer's perspective, we can all appreciate just the beauty of the carpet. Um, but then when we think about interface in the sustainability space, they're also a true leader there because they have already reached their mission zero goal. And if anyone is not in the sustainability space, basically what that means is they do not impact the earth at all while producing their products. So this in and of itself is pretty incredible, like kudos to Interface for being such a leader. Um, but now they're actually working towards a new goal, which they're calling climate take back. And this goal will actually help reverse global warming. So this is like some of the coolest stuff that we're seeing out there in the world of sustainability. So our assignment as we worked with Interface was really to educate and empower employees to understand the company's new goal, climate take back, and then give managers uh, tools to get the employees excited about the new goal and to just even understand it and talk about it and share it with people around them. So we were just getting the energy and the excitement internally at Interface up so that everyone was supportive of this new mission. Yes, and I love that they were so in tune that they wanted to garner the managers to be super empowered and educated about this next big endeavor so that you know there there's so much buy-in and real purpose to to making this work right i love that what do we have here yeah, so this is really cool. Um, we were inspired by the design, the modular design of the carpet tiles. They're basically these squares and they all fit together really nicely. And so what we did was we developed these modular interactive walls. And so they are modular because they can fit in any different space we wanted. So, you know, if a company had a small wall, they could put up just a couple of them. If they had a large wall, they could put up the entire thing. So it was really exciting to like play off that design idea and make this an interesting interaction active wall to fit in any location. So basically what happened on these walls is managers would regularly post um, new questions or new ideas for employees to respond to and their pens glued to the wall and employees could take them down and write in personal messages. And really everybody could just have like open discussions and kind of discover common values and then even talk about how they could just together be successful with this climate take back mission. Um, so it was a really cool way for everybody to get involved. All right, and then here um, you can see a series of posters that were developed around the idea that Interface strives to lead the industrial, what they were calling the re-revolution. And basically this is just a fancy way to say that they love the world and they wanna make the world a better place to live. So these posters were hung up at the offices and they functioned as reminders about the goals of the Climate Take Back Initiative. So employees would see these posters hanging on the walls every day as they walked to the lunchroom or to their cubicle, and they would just be reminded of the great things their company was doing and were able to keep that front of mind each day. Yes, and as much as we tell stories and show images, we always push for that the employees are the models, right? Instead of hiring models, like why do that? Like use who you have and, and that's an actual employee. I, I do, I love that and thank you for that. I would wanna add, and I love that Agota uh, mentioned a little props for interface and the use of biomimicry. I was exactly going to bring something uh, to the for forefront about that. Um, you know, as bold as their statement is, and so impressive for a company to take that lead to, you know, re, re, re revolutionize the industry. Um, you know, from going beyond mission zero emissions, um, I'm really excited about the idea that they want to turn their factories into forests, right? The inspiration of bio biomimicry. What that means in, in a nutshell is they want to take carbon that's usually offset and actually bring it in, like take back the carbon in the air, um, A, for clean air, but they are working towards a cleaner process that they can utilize into their factories, which is super cool, and therefore combating against global warming. Such more details on that. All right, what else do you have for us? All right, so International Paper is another client we work for, and they're basically the leader in creating renewable fiber-based packaging pulp and paper. And so the products that they make range from paper, obviously, International Paper, um, to other such things like boxes and diapers and you know, a whole bunch of other things just made from fiber. So our task with International Paper was to educate stakeholders about their products and then the importance of regenerative forests. And for those who might be new to this term of regener 
regeneration, it's when it's used in relation to forests, it's really about the idea of ensuring that new trees are planted once uh, trees are harvested for paper, pulp, or fiber. And so basically it's regenerative because it can keep, keep the cycle going. Um, so we created an immersive online experience for international paper to serve as a tool to educate viewers. And then we also create a series of reports to show um, all of the things that international paper was doing as a sustainability leader. So if we move on to the next slide here, you can see some of the content that was designed for the website, which is called Our Renewable Future. So from a design perspective, by using illustrations and videos and infographics, we were really able to take this very technical sustainability information and break it down into content that was both engaging, easy to learn, and even inspiring. So on the left, you could see how we used just the simple illustration style in this infographic uh, to explain the complex process of a paper's lifestyle and really broke it down into simple steps that were very easy to understand. And then on the far right, you can see how like controversial topics were faced head on, um, like international paper answered questions like, does using paper products kill trees or should I go paperless? And so we were able to answer those questions head on. And so I think it's really important to point out like from not just the design perspective, but from the content perspective was how transparent and um, honest international paper was being about these critical issues that people were concerned about and then educating them that actually when you use our paper products you don't really have to worry about these things because and went on to explain the why so it was really neat to be able to work with them on this project absolutely what else do we have here Oh, and this one, this one is just um, some images. So we took tons and tons of video clips while we were working with international paper. And here um, we're showing products to feel good about because international paper has demonstrated their commitment to the planet. So they're transparent, as I already said, with the responsible use of forests. They design their products to be sustainable. They've established credibility, like we talked about from, you know, using those FAQs to making sure that they use recovered fiber responsibly. They are very careful about how they use water and about life on land when they're cutting down the forest, how they manage the, the living ecosystems and replace the, far, the forest so that those continue on. Um, so they, were, they made a strong purpose of sharing this information with the right audiences. And it really did just help build their reputation as a sustainability leader. Excellent. And I love that we're sharing uh, kind of the their case, you know, their case study, because, you know, we've been a strategic partner with them for so long now. Um, our relationship with IP has grown to really more strategic um, influences too. And I, I would want to point out that we proudly have helped them redefine their trajectory with their mission and vision, strategic drivers, their core values, you know, in a nutshell, for those who don't quite know what that means, um, it's where they want the business to go, but we also emphasize why, um, but also what goals uh, to drive, to get them to drive through that and to recognize the company values they share, because it's really a collection of everyone um, that really is going to get them there, right? Um, and I want to add that um, I'm actually really excited for the 2030 goals that we help them um, uh, prepare, because um, they're really going to focus in on people on planet, which is cool too. Good for that. All right, so in this example here, this is Qualcomm. Um, and Qualcomm has this program called Qualcomm for Good. And the point of the program is to raise awareness about their efforts to bring wireless technology to underserved communities around the globe, around, excuse me, around the globe. And the point is really to help them strengthen their economic development. So I'll give you a couple examples just so you can understand what that really means. So Qualcomm brought drone technology to an area in Brazil to basically help farmers get a better crop yield. Um, they have brought mobile technologies to areas in Mexico um, to help treat diabetes. And they even had created these sensors that work with the internet of things that were used to test water and make sure that water was healthy enough for, public, for the public to drink and to share information about how to conserve and keep water clean. So you can see how essential some of this information and technology that they're bringing to these communities really are for the wellness and survival of people. So it's really cool to see all the good stuff that they're up to. 
So for Qualcomm, what we did was we developed this social media campaign to highlight these efforts. And on average, we would be sharing about like 60 to 70 posts per month. And we had a huge increase in engagement. It was really exciting to see that people were really interested and excited and willing to support the efforts of Qualcomm for good. Um, also, one of the things we did on the next slide, Edison, I think, is we helped develop um, we helped develop a campaign to promote their power of nine video. And so going back to the SDGs that Izzy was talking about earlier, this is for SDG nine. And I don't know if you guys can remember from that slide you saw at the very beginning, but the point of SDG nine, it was really about industry innovation and infrastructure. And this is something that Qualcomm really stands for. Um, so this was one of the, their, um, movies or shows that they created that we really wanted to make sure that we were promoting. And then in the next slide, you can see here's some other efforts that we had designed in order to help promote their efforts. Um, and really, they function in uh, talking about four key areas. So Qualcomm's role in purposeful innovation, Qualcomm's role in STEM education. And for those who don't know, that means basically science, technology, engineering, and math, um, responsible business, as well as the Qualcomm staff of employees, but for people in general. Um, so in, in overall, Qualcomm for Good has been a huge impact on the world. It has effect, affected more than 20 million people in 47 countries. So it's really exciting to be a part of this program and to help work with them on how to design something that is just doing such wonderful stuff in the world. Awesome. Yes, and I want to add that Qualcomm is actually headquartered here in San Diego. Um, I think the public knows them as a tech company. Some people kind of know them as neat, like inventors of communication chips. Um, but you know, if you also think about, uh, they actually help other industries, like you said, with healthcare, to really innovate and, and share tech in a new way, right? And I, I love that this, this case study here is actually spotlighting um, everything else that they do, right? Their global initiative to close the digital divide and allow access to information and, to, and technology to be, you know, essentially universal, which is cool. So thanks for sharing that. Awesome. What I want to do here is do a little shift. Thank you, Kirsten. I would now love to share um, a little passion project uh, that Ita has created. Ita, take the wheel. Yeah, so this project is, I'm going to talk about two projects. Um, and one inspired the creation of the other. So what we wanted to do was create a marketing piece that would showcase Think Parallax's creativity and sustainability expertise using social media. Um, the task is to develop a creative, unique, and engaging way of communicating corporate sustainability. And the approach we took was to use a unique voice of a fictional story to engage audiences about sustainability. And Ita, what do we see here? <laughs> Yeah, what's the office <laughs> joke that we see here? Yeah, there is an office. Yeah, okay, that, that's the next slide, which is... Um, <laughs> okay, it's a secret. <laughs> BK, the... Yeah, okay. So this first project, this is called BK, the bathroom key, and sustainability <laughs> expert. This is actually the office bathroom key, which is a tree branch, and I just dressed them up in... Ken doll clothes to create a character. Um, a little backstory, he's really passionate about sustainability because his um, family, which was a forest, got killed by a big corporation. So this is kind of like his way of getting revenge is by spreading sustainability. Uh, yeah, so he educates his followers and every piece of education is communicated in a creative and quirky way. And for me, this was an exercise of creating a unique voice within a field. I did the research to gather up common topics in corporate system building and just presented the information in a different way because who wouldn't want to be entertained while they're learning? Something that I find interesting as a communicator is the ability to create different personalities. And the sustainability field, there's a lot of space for communicators to 
create their own voices and connect with untapped audiences and even untapped markets. When corporate brands are all trying to sound the same, it's a competitive advantage to communicate in a voice that's true to you and human because people like brands are human just like them. Mm -hmm. Well said, Ita. Yeah, wow, preach. Yeah, and what I love is that, you know, we're always accustomed in our end at least where you know a lot of the content is long form and it's just dry and we have to really lift a lot of love and visuals to really elevate the importance of the messaging but here i love the humor you've injected like no one's ever taken that angle um definitely check out that instagram handle um tpx underscore bathroom key um you know get motivated um but yes Awesome, awesome share. What else do you have for us, Kita? Yeah, so in the next slide, we took, after looking at the bathroom key project, um, internally we decided to take an approach that was different and creative and had a convincing perspective about corporate sustainability. The final product, it's a collaborative effort between Izzy, um, she's one of the panelists, and Mike Howard, our sustainability director, and I. And the comic tells a story of an office space full of stereotypical characters in the field. We have Kip, who's this uh, pink-haired person in the yellow shirt. Uh, he, he's the main character in trying to learn everything about sustainability, but he doesn't really know too much about it. He just got chosen because no one knows what it is, so they just chose him kind of randomly. And then we got Chad, he's the CEO. He's this dude here on the bottom right square with the, um, the long sleeves and blonde hair. And he doesn't really care about sustainability. He's just trying to make money off it. And then we got Mandy, who's this uh, woman at the top here, who's, you know, like a yoga, vegetable eating type of character and just very gung ho about sustainability. We got Zimmy, this all purple guy on the left, uh, the right over here. And he's a sustainability expert. He knows like a lot about it um, to the degree that he kind of gets, um, he becomes kind of invisible because people just think he's crazy, I guess. Uh, and through these hilarious misunderstandings and discussions about sustainability, the viewers brought into an interesting story full of sustainability insights and commentary. Mm -hmm. So this uh, we'll be releasing it soon, but that's a little peek into it. Exciting, yes, definitely stay tuned for some fun stuff coming through the TPX Think Parallax handle on Instagram. Um, all right, so we only have a couple of minutes left, but we do wanna jump into, to remind you that a Q and A, we're gonna try to squeeze that in at the end, but we do have one little bit left and we'll make it quick. All right, so to talk about this exercise, we, um, I think we first need to address that there should be, we advise that there should be a shift in the way that you kind of think about what can I do for sustainability instead of it being like a list form, which is not really active. We want and hope to inspire you to shift it to what should I do for sustainability. Um, maybe these, this exercise will help that. And then ultimately, when you know, once you're active, um, you really feel that it's more about what must you do um, because you find so much value in what you can contribute. All right, let's jump into this. So I'm going to explain how this kind of works. Feel free to screenshot this. Um, we can also share. Oh, thank you, Izzy. So share the PDF if you want to download it. Um, how this form works, it, it was designed so that you can really just think of it as one, two, three steps. So even if you don't have this, just keep a mental note or write it down. Um, what, what you have here at the top is just a reminder of the 17 global topics from the UN that you can kind of pair up, but how the three steps works is number one, think about your talents, your skills, your passion things, anything that you can think of that you can offer, right? When you list that out, you kind of realize, no, oh, there's many things like I can, I can do um, and give. Uh, number two is then with the SDGs, choose up to three SDGs of your choice that you feel really passionate about as kind of options for yourself. And the most important part, number three, the way that number three works is we 
advise you to choose a journey. Um, and one could be um, you yourself as a self-starter, you can start locally, or you can go big and kind of think um, large organization, pairing up, et cetera, right? Um, another way to think of it is small, medium, large. Um, and so to further work you through this idea as you kind of figure out some stuff, I do want to mention that although that there's not a lot of time for me to actually practice, practice this right now, um, we encourage you to kind of try to do this exercise on your own um, and definitely share what uh, you come up with. We would love to hear that. Um, but Ita and, and us, we have some examples for you to kind of see what, what this could look like. Ita, take it over. Okay, so these examples go from uh, the least amount of people to the most. So this first one is a solo superstar. So this could be, I guess, a student or you're just doing this alone. Uh, the examples, like you really like to make posters, you like reading, researching stuff. And example of SDGs that this person's passionate about, climate change, gender equality. And an example plan this person could follow is creating a campaign about the gender gap in the cause for clean water as a poster series, social media account to make the issue go viral. All right, the second one is, is a small team. So this individual likes detecting problems. He's a web developer, uh, he's interested in tech innovation. And the SDGs, all right, number nine, industry innovation, infrastructure, no poverty, affordable and clean energy. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. So this person's just gonna connect with local web developers and they meet up and it's kind of like a, um, one of those coding meetups where they get together and they think of a social problem to solve in their community and come up with the tech solution for it. So whatever your skill is, you can link that to solving a social issue. All right, number three, go big or go home. This is someone with a lot of resources like time and money. Uh, this person has time, likes to cook, is really into health. All right. SDGs of choice, zero hunger, number 10, reduce inequalities and sustainable cities and communities. So this person could form a, a local garden to occasionally uh, feed the homeless in the neighborhood with the meals. And as far as um, uh, needing help, it could be a volunteer type of thing. So like uh, local volunteers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those are good examples. I know that we're out of time, but what I want to do is first say thank you before we get to some questions. If, if those who want to stay for a little couple of questions, um, we do want to thank you for your time. Thank you to the panelists. Um, thank you to SDDW. Um, the poster winner will try to tap for afterwards. Um, definitely email, email us if you have any questions. Um, but we do want to kind of maybe squeeze in one or two questions. What do you guys think? Daisy, what do we have? Yeah, um, there are some awesome questions here. Everyone has been asking really thoughtful and tough things. And want to mention, too, that whatever we don't choose to answer live, we will address on our uh, Twitter account. We'll answer those. Um, because, yeah, these are, these are awesome questions. Um, so one that stood out to me though was um, from Jess and it says, do you have any advice for mission driven designers, marketers and creators who want to pivot during this time to more than ever into a purpose driven economy and out of profit first driven traditional environments? Sorry, my words kind of like stumbled at the end. Um, <laughs> but do you kind of get the gist of the question? Kirsten, do you want to take a stab? 
Mm, yeah, this is actually a really great question. I'm thinking if you're looking to make a change, I think one of the best ways is to start looking around in your local community at companies that are doing good and see if there's one that inspires you and maybe even offer to volunteer or help out first, see if you like the vibe and you want to get involved. Another great way is to look up B Corps in your community. Um, B Corps you know, just how they, you know, they become B Corps because they already believe in the type of work we're doing and they value that. And so that's another great lens to look for good companies to work for. So those might be two simple ways to think about ways to pivot. I don't know, do you guys have anything else you want to add? Yeah, I could say a little something. I, um, if you're trying to pivot from profit first to mission first, uh, I guess I would say maybe just get uh, comfortable with the foundational concepts of sustainability and then as a communicator, just make a couple of pieces that, that um, come from your learnings. And that way, when you apply for these type of jobs, you already kind of have a voice, like your own voice that you already develop based on you know, the sustainability field. And, that could be a, a way to get in the door. Absolutely. Izzy, what else do we have? Do we have maybe one last question? Yeah, one more. And I, I really, um, I just, I think this is a good question and it's from Jenna and it says, how does Think Parallax go about deciding which clients to work with or to not work with? Um, and there were a couple other questions about like the aviation industry when we use the Southwest example. So um, Edison, I don't know if you want to speak to this since you've worked at uh, Think Parallax the longest. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the way that we distinguish choosing our clients has a lot to do with well, what is their intent and you know, how much are they willing to be authentic you know, because the way that we look at it is, A, we want to address, we look to clients that are much bigger because they are so influential and we believe that they should be the leaders because they are influential. But we also want to pair up and see that, um, how do you say, like, they are authentic in understanding where they truly are because no company is 100%, you know, perfect. Um, but owning that truth, and, but then it's more about what are their strategies to, to make better, right? And, and, and what are their goals set? So someone with those aspirations, that's something for us to work with and um, a solid partnership that can entail after, after that. Yeah, for sure. And that, so that means in that shell, it could be almost any industry, um, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Thanks. I think that's the, is this the end? I think this is the end, huh? The end. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again, everyone, for joining. I really appreciate all your time and, and, and energy. And thanks again to the panelists. Have a good day, you guys. And uh, we all say bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Take thank care. So much. Have a good weekend. Be safe, Peace especially out. those in California with the fires. Absolutely.